Right now, a man and a teenage girl are dead after a police pursuit and standoff in Dane County. Why it's not the first time the man has been in trouble with the law. Also, Madison police make an arrest in connection with a deadly shooting last night on the city's north side. And later, a member of the Wisconsin Supreme Court announces she will not be seeking re-election, but it could mean for the state's highest court. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with continuing coverage of two homicides that took place in Dane County yesterday. Well, we'll first start at the town of Albion, where we are learning more about that police pursuit that turned into a standoff, ending with two people dead. The incident also connected to a homicide case, apparently, in Iowa. News for now's Braden Ross is in Albion with the very latest. Braden, what can you tell us tonight? Yeah, Eric and Charlotte, you can see behind me. This is about as close as we can get to the area of that where that house was, where two of those people were found. Um, you can see the sheriff's office still has this street blocked off here in the town of Albion. But let me tell you a little bit more about what we know went down here last night and into early this morning. So officials say this all started actually down in Dubuque County, Iowa, where a 32 year old woman was found dead in her home. That was at around 7 p.m. last night. The two children that lived in that home with her, a 13 year old girl and a five month old baby were nowhere to be found. As deputies in Dubuque County were arriving on scene there, the violence was still unfolding now here in Dane County. The incident uh, included uh, multiple scenes, including a police pursuit in regards to uh, two individuals firing rounds uh, at our deputies and other responding agencies. It included a handgun, a rifle, uh, as well as an armed home invasion an armed standoff, and again leading to the decease of two of our very own community members. Now around 5.30 p.m., Dane County Sheriff's deputies responded to a residence in the town of Dunn where that five-month-old baby was dropped off by two people. One of those people, 37-year-old Alexander Grunke, was later identified as a person of interest in that Iowa murder. The other was a 13-year-old girl who lived at that home in Iowa. Now the two fled from Dane County Sheriff's Office deputies in the town of Dunn and armed with a rifle and a handgun. Both of them shot at the deputies chasing them. The chase ended here on Highway 51. The 13-year-old girl got out and ran into the woods when deputies caught up with her. She was unresponsive and died on the scene after life-saving measures were unsuccessful. We don't know her cause of death yet. Now, Grunky ran to a nearby home where he forced his way inside and into the basement. The family who lived in that house was home at the time but made it out unharmed. And after an hours-long standoff, deputies on found Grunky dead in the basement of apparent suicide. Now, we have a ton more details coming out in this case. Actually, some disturbing details our newsroom is learning right now about Grunky's criminal history. I'll send it back to you, Eric and Charlotte, so you can tell him more about that. All right, Braden Ross live tonight. Braden, thank you. As she just was alluding to, this isn't the first time Grunky has been in trouble with the law. Back in 2006, he was charged in a case involving the attempted sexual assault of a corpse. Grunky, along with his twin brother Nicholas and also Dustin Radke, went to a cemetery in Cassville to dig up a corpse so Nicholas could have sex with it. The men stopped when they were unable to open the concrete vault. Grunky was arrested that night and later sentenced to two years in prison in 2010. Now to Madison, where we learn more today about that deadly shooting that happened last night on the city's north side. It happened on the 1900 block of Northport Drive, and police say a woman has been arrested in connection with this incident. Our Catherine Merck was at the scene where police arrived last night, and she joins us live with an update from police. So, Catherine, what did they tell you? Charlotte and Eric, this was the first homicide of the calendar year here in Madison. It happened at the apartment complex I'm standing in front of. And we got an update from the police department today, breaking down some more details of what happened. Here's what we know this evening. At around 6.30 last night, police got to the scene of this apartment complex on the 1900 block of Northport Drive. The 31-year-old male had life-threatening injuries and was taken to the hospital where he later died. Today, police confirmed that that Tamar Brianna Beasley was booked into the Dane County Jail this morning in connection to the shooting. Police told us today that surveillance video showed a fight between Beasley and the male victim, who she had a domestic relationship with. That fight happened near a playground at the apartment complex before a shot was fired. I often find it, you know, disturbing when I see playgrounds uh, near the scene of, of any particular incident of violence. I think we all do, uh, which means that we have to do a better job. 
Beasley is tentatively charged with first degree intentional homicide. The police chief told us there weren't any prior criminal calls between Beasley and the victim here in Madison, but there was a previous incident in Illinois they're working to get more information about from the Chicago Police Department. Now, the chief didn't tell us any details about how many times the male victim was shot as they're waiting for autopsy reports. This is still an active investigation. Reporting live on Madison's north side, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. With major developing stories throughout our viewing area, make sure you download our free Channel 3000 mobile app to your smartphone. It's free where you get your apps. Just search Channel 3000. In Beloit, police say they arrested a 16-year-old in connection with the shooting death of a 20-year-old Beloit man. The shooting happened on April 5th in the 1400 block of Nelson Avenue. There, officers found the man with a gunshot wound. He died at the scene. Today, two homes were searched in Beloit and Janesville. As a result of the investigation, a 16-year-old was taken into custody. Statewide tornado drill scheduled for tonight has now been canceled. That's due to the potential for severe weather. It was scheduled to happen at 6.45. Canceled as a precautionary measure will not be rescheduled now. It would have been the second one of the day. The first was held at 1.45 this afternoon. Now, the likelihood of severe weather, though, is pretty low. Let's check your first warrant forecast. And Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Eric, yes, very, very low. What the concern is is for the potential for one or two of these showers to perhaps spin up a funnel cloud, a cold air funnel cloud, or a very, very brief weak tornado touching the ground. And this looks very, very unlikely, but the National Weather Service does not want to confuse the public, so they always err on the side of caution to cancel when there is any potential threat for severe weather across the area. So again, not going to be seeing this rescheduled across the area. Here are those showers right now off towards the north and towards the west, over towards Lone Rock in southwest Wisconsin. Right here in Dane County, that rain is knocking on the door and Cross Plains and Mount Horeb, but struggling to make it towards the east. Some of the communities that are having a little bit heavier shower activity out towards Muscaday over towards uh, just uh, just west of Avoca here on 60 and on 80. So if you're heading west on 14 or 60 out towards our friends in southwest Wisconsin, you might really have to get the windshield wipers going. It will be pretty heavy rain in some spots, but not all of southern Wisconsin is going to see this. In fact, this is updating as we speak here right now. Some more shower and thunderstorm activity here as we carry on through the evening hour, stretching right down the I-39 corridor. As we head towards 10, 11 o'clock later in the evening, we lose the heat of the day, so to speak. It's not very warm, but just enough of it out there for that thunderstorm activity to start to dwindle. Days ago, we were saying that as we go out into early next week, beware, it could be very unsettled and stormy with the potential of severe weather. And we've flipped the switch here for alert day conditions to likely unfold as we go on into your Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. Could even be your Tuesday morning as well. Coming up in Maine weather, we will track how much water we can expect out of tonight's showers and storms. How windy you can expect your Friday. Why we've got the warm weather coming this weekend and how that warm weather is going to fuel Tuesday's potential alert day conditions. A Wisconsin woman who stabbed a classmate nearly to death to appease the fictional character Slenderman will remain in a mental institution. Today, a judge denied Morgan Geyser's request to be released. Geyser was 12 years old in 2014 when she and Anissa Wire attacked their friend. Geyser stabbed the girl 19 times. Both she and Wire were found guilty of attempted homicide by mental disease or defect and sentenced to a mental health facility. In 2021, Wire was granted a condition Additional release. This is the third time Geyser has requested to be released. In Manitowoc County, it's now been more than 50 days since three-year-old Elijah Vu went missing in two rivers. Vu's mother, Katrina Bauer, sent Elijah to stay with Jesse Vang to be disciplined. Vang called 911 claiming he woke up from a nap and Elijah was gone. Now both Vang and Bauer have been charged with child neglect, but not for Vu's disappearance. Two Rivers Police Chief Ben Minert says local, state, and federal resources are being used to uncover all of Manitowoc County. We have no evidence to believe that this child was abducted. That evidence has also shown that this child didn't just simply walk off. Minard says the FBI has helped sift through more than 10,000 video files and at least 1,500 tips. At the state capitol, Wisconsin will see a shakeup on its highest court. The longest serving justice on the state Supreme Court announced today she will retire next spring. Here's political reporter Will Keneally with more. Will? Well, this leaves a big open seat for the April 2025 election. Justice Ann Walsh Bradley is a member of the court's narrow liberal majority. So whoever wins that seat next year will control the high court. 
Now, Justice Ann Walsh Bradley was first elected in 1995, and the liberal majority that she's a part of now, it's the first time liberals have controlled the court in more than a decade. Now, since the liberals won the majority last year, the court has overturned the state's legislative maps and could have the final say in blocking the state's abortion ban. Now, know of at least one conservative who is running in that election, former Republican Attorney General Brad Schimmel. We've heard from a couple of sources, some Dane County judges may be mulling a run, County Judge Susan Crawford and Appellate Court Judge Chris Taylor. Those announcements could come soon, though neither judge has confirmed yet whether they will in fact run. Still ahead on News 3 Now at 6, two writers from Madison receiving an award only eight others in the world were also recognized for. Also, the Wisconsin DNR says it found chronic wasting disease in a dead deer in central Wisconsin, what it means for the surrounding areas. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. At Gruber Law Offices, you pay us nothing until we win your case. It costs you nothing up front to get the results and compensation you deserve. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Complete your backyard with an 11% rebate on everything at Menards. Spend less time maintaining your deck and more time relaxing on it. With Ultra Deck, low maintenance composite decking from Menards. It's easy to install, easier to maintain, and built to last. Suncast provides high quality, low maintenance, and easy to assemble storage. Protect patio cushions and other outdoor accessories. With his Suncast 50 gallon deck box, only $69.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Now's the best time to refresh your space during Steinhoffel's Best Brands Sale. Take an extra 10% off all our best brands. Canadel, Gosho, King Hickory, Flex Steel, and more. All 10% off. Need a little extra help transforming your space? Save up to $200 on our design services. Plus, make your new room more affordable with Steinhoffel's 60-month financing. It's Steinhoffel's Best Brands Sale. Shop in-store or online at steinhoffels.com. What can our foam do for your home? Incredible comfort, no matter what the weather. Incredible savings, because your AC is going to run so much less. It even reduces outside noise and allergens. No matter what kind of cheap insulation you already have, our foam will go right over it. Incredible. And spring is the time for incredible deals. So we're matching the $1,200 tax credit with a $1,200 discount. USA Insulation. How old are you? 99 plus. And he spent a lifetime doing something good. I'll tag along with this amazing local veteran as he reveals priceless life lessons and what we can all do to make his greatest wish come true. Tonight at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Opening day for turkey hunting season in Wisconsin opens in less than a week. Turkey season will run from April 17th through May 28th. All seven turkey management zones will be open for hunting. Hunters must carry their spring training license, wild turkey stamp, and valid harvest authorization while hunting. A wild deer found dead in Washera County earlier this year has been confirmed to have had chronic wasting disease. The DNR says it is the first positive test result for that county. The three-year-old buck was found dead in the town of Watoma, within 10 miles of the Marquette and Portage County borders there. State law requires the DNR enact a three-year baiting and feeding ban in counties where CWD has been detected, as well as a two-year ban in adjoining counties within 10 miles of a CWD detection. Well, two Madison writers are being recognized for their work. Gota Teoni Mang and Ada Zhang, both writers of fiction, were winners of the Whiting Awards. The awards honor 10 emerging writers of fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and drama with a $50,000 award. Mang is the author of Call and Response, a story collection featuring nine big-hearted, capacious stories rooted in the villages and cities of Botswana. Zhang is the author of The Sorrows of Others, a story collection that explores the paradox that historical silences and legacies of the past, in particular the impact of the Cultural Revolution on Chinese Americans. And coming up, a new report showing a bleak outlook on the state's teacher workforce. Plus, the Madison School District introduces its new superintendent, what he has planned for the district. The weather shaping up to be fantastic for the weekend. Alex returns his complete forecast after the break. April showers bring Mayflowers. But do your tire gutters risk basement flooding? 
to the rescue, Fry Construction. Our absolute gutter system is custom fabricated on site for a perfect seamless fit. It's engineered to outperform. Looking for a break in the clouds? How about a sunny 24% discount on our absolute gutter system? To get this deal, visit FryConstruction.com today to schedule a full roof replacement. Back by popular demand, direct from Las Vegas, from the creators of Oh What a Night, 4x4. Four exciting performers live. Four by four. With that feel-good music you grew up with. A fabulous tribute to the Beach Boys, the Beatles, the Bee Gees, and Motown. In one great show. Four by four. Monday, April 15th, 7 p.m. at the Capitol Theater in Madison. Get your tickets now. Outlets at the Dells, an attraction not to be missed. With over 60 of the world's biggest brands, we thrill family vacationers, trendsetters, and all who love a smoke and hot discount. We're all about the thrill of the deal, the joy of finding the thing you forgot to pack, the swimsuit that's the hit of the park, the dress that makes you walk with swagger, and the discounts that no one else can touch. Save even more with 25% off and get a free Vera Bradley umbrella. Visit outletsatthedells.com for coupon and details. I worked as a truck driver for 36 years. And then one day I got this letter. Your retirement will be cut. Will be cut in half. You don't forget something like that. Every paycheck, we put money away. But because of Wall Street greed, boom, it was gone. But Tammy Baldwin saw what they were doing and wrote a bill to save our retirement. Then she fought like hell to pass it. What Tammy Baldwin did for our families, you don't forget something like that. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. It's our lowest prices of the season at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Right now, shop unbeatable deals on the things you need for spring, like $250 instant savings on this new Cub Cadet Hydro Lawn Tractor. Stock up and save on 20-pound bags of Blaine's brand Easy Scoop Cat Litter, four for 24 bucks. And get a free bag of Estate Garden Fertilizer when you buy a bag of new Estate Premium 4-in-1 Lawn Treatment. Don't miss our lowest prices of the season in-store or online at farmandfleet.com. Watching News 3 now at 6, moving forward. Well, the new Madison School District superintendent introduced himself to staff and students today. Our Medi We heard from Gothard himself as he laid out his mission for the 52 schools in the district. And after, elementary students got to ask him some pressing questions of their own. The fourth and fifth graders in attendance asked how he would be able to manage so many schools, why he wanted to come back to Madison, and most importantly, how he decides if there's a snow day. After hearing Gothard's curriculum and budget plans, I spoke with school board president Nichelle Nichols about what made Gothard stand out among the candidates. Being engaging, um, being present, and I think that came through time and time again in many of his responses about his approach and the way that he wants to engage as a superintendent. He told staff and students that creating a strong relationship between the schools and the Madison community is a top priority. Gothard is to begin in the role no later than July 1st of this year, but district officials say he's expressed interest in starting the transition process even earlier. A new report released by the State Department of Public Instruction today paints a bleak picture of the state's teacher workforce. The report calls teachers staffing a crisis, saying that teachers are leaving the state at an alarming rate. The data shows teacher pay has also dropped off in the last 10 years. We are in a crisis, but it is not an unsolvable crisis that can't be resolved. Our state has the resources to do so. It's just that they have chosen not to. Underly pushed for using unspent parts of the state budget to help support teachers and schools. Well, the rain lighting up later tonight. Alex rejoins us now. A complete look at his first one forecast. Yeah, Eric, so got a great viewer submitted question. I'm going to answer here too related to that rain trying to fall across parts of southern Wisconsin. It's isolated out there. A few thunderstorms, but a lot of southern Wisconsin not getting rain, even though some of our radar apps are showing that it's looking like it, it's raining outside, but it's actually not. Then we trade things in for a breezy Friday and a warm weekend ahead. That's why we got the gold shades here. All right, but first, 
in about, oh, let's say here, a half hour, the tornado warning drill that the Nash Weather Service had scheduled is canceled. And that's for a very, very, very slim chance for a funnel cloud or a brief weak tornado spin up with some of these showers and isolated thunderstorms that are dotting portions of southern Wisconsin. And it will not be rescheduled just to relay that information. Now, why is our why, why are some of our radar apps and radar applications showing that it's raining, but it's not? Look at the humidity. The relative humidity is very low. The dew point is low. It's dry. That means as it's raining, the rain is evaporating in some cases before it even hits the ground. Where it is hitting the ground persistently, stretching from Lone Rock down towards, oh, we'd say Dodgeville, down towards Darlington, west of Madison. In Dane County here, we've had uh, batches of green move across the county. And again, a lot of that's been evaporating before it hits the ground. Although out towards Cross Plains, out towards Mazomania, and over towards Arena, those raindrops are very likely making it to the ground with some of the heavier drops over towards Muscaday, over towards Avoca as you swing out over 14 and around Highway 80. Doppler track also indicating here that we're going to see those scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms dwindle as we head towards that 10, 11 o'clock time frame as we lose the heat of the day or the heat of the day, so to speak. It's not very warm out mild for this time of year, but not very hot. Overall amounts light in the precipitation department quarter, maybe half inch. If you get one or two of those showers over the course of the evening, persistent, you might pick up three quarters of an inch. Then we trade the shower activity in for windy conditions. Hold on to your hats on Friday. Be prepared. It's going to be a breezy day with temperatures pretty decent for this time of year in the upper 50s. Now for days we've been mentioning next week is going to be considerably on the stormy side. And in fact, alert day conditions are quite likely on your Tuesday. Our friends at the Storm Prediction Center have outlined pretty much all of southern Wisconsin, the entire viewing area for an outlook of severe weather. To have this outlook five, six days in advance means high confidence in the potential for some of these thunderstorms to become severe. And again, we've given a couple lead, day, lead days on top of that. Let's recap that bottom line for next week's alert day. Severe storms possible Tuesday. All storm hazards possible. Damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps some tornadoes. The best chance is going to be Tuesday afternoon. There's one ingredient that might be missing on Tuesday. Look how persistent the green and the yellow activity is all day Tuesday going on even into the wee hours of your Wednesday. If we continue to have showers and storms all day Tuesday, that limits the heating and that limits the energy for widespread severe weather. So that's a distinct possibility that may lower that severe chance, which the first one weather team will be keeping an eye on. But prior to those alert day conditions and stormy weather, as we head out into the 10 day forecast, look at Saturday and Sunday. 68 on Saturday, 76 degrees on Sunday. Get outside this weekend and enjoy it. I encourage you to do it. And coming up in sports, it's been a challenging road back to the field for Aaron Witt. While the Badger outside linebacker says he's excited for Saturdays at Camp Randall. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Get solar and get saving with Olsen Solar Energy in the Madison area. When you're talking to someone and you call someone at Olsen Solar, it's not someone in Utah, it's not someone in California, it is someone local right here. By doing that, you know, we control the entire process. So we control the project management, we control the design, we control the installation, the electric, the hookup, permitting, and, and that really sets us apart. Stop into our location near you or give us a call and ask us about our Earth Day promo. Upgrade your garage, patio, or basement this spring with our beautiful cutting-edge concrete coatings. Our coatings are four times stronger than epoxy and guaranteed to increase your home's value. For a limited time, save up to $500 off your project. Plus, call during this program to see if you qualify for payments starting at just $30 a month. Habitat homes are not free. They're built and bought by hardworking families just like yours. Families with jobs, dreams, and a strong determination to create a better future. With stable homes, they can invest more in their health, education, community, and beyond. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line, many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. 
Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative. With 95 cents of every dollar donated, going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. Nobody wants to replace the roof, but these days many roofs are only lasting 10 to 15 years, costing you tens of thousands of dollars. RoofMax makes your roof like new by strengthening and rejuvenating it. RoofMax treatments started early enough can extend the life of your roof by 15 years or more. And even if you think your roof is at the end of its life, 90% of the time, RoofMax can extend the life of your roof by five years at a fraction of the cost of a new roof. So give us a call and we'll give you a free assessment to see if your roof qualifies. It's been a long journey for Aaron Witt to get back on the field. The Badger outside linebacker was a fixture on Wisconsin's injury report in 2021, 2022, and 2023. During those three seasons, he had four different surgeries, two on his right foot and two on his right ankle. Last November at Minnesota, Witt got in and played four snaps. His first game action in 1,060 days. And now at spring ball, he's finally a full go and fully healthy. And he can't wait to show the world. Completely different player now than I was back then. Just, um, and I think I'm a better player now. Uh, there's some things that you know I still got to work through, and in the fall, I'll I'll be able to show that. I'm excited to show that. So being able to be out there together is special. Knowing everything he's been through, the surgeries, the thinking he's about to be back, they're getting backtracked again. Just being able to see all that and see where he's at now and how still good he is like it's I, I i'm so happy for him and i'm excited to be a part of his journey and be out there with him on saturdays the bucks won their second straight game last night big in part or big thanks in part to the play of bobby portis otherwise known as bobby buckets who fill up the stat sheet against the magic 30 points nine rebounds five steals and three assists portis did a little bit of everything something he's been doing all year for milwaukee which is why his teammates believe He's locked up the NBA's Sixth Man of the Year award. He's done all season, not always five steals, but he's been just disruptive on the ball and blitzes and shows. Um, just played at, at that level all season long. You know, I think it's a pretty easy call who the Sixth Man of the Year is. Coming here was perfect, man. Just being able to play with swag and energy. Guys, let me be me. And everything been working out so far, man. Um, only thing I need is a couple votes. And the Brewers and Reds were supposed to wrap up their four-game series this afternoon, but Mother Nature had other plans. The game was postponed and will be made up on August 30th as game one of a split doubleheader. But, you know, sometimes it's just nice to have a day off. Yeah, they're getting that. <laughs> it's been kind of a rainy couple days down in Cincinnati, yeah. and mm -hmm. we're seeing some rain across the viewing area today. Yeah, for parts of the area, southwest Wisconsin, mm -hmm. isolated showers and thunderstorms tonight, but they will end later this evening. Then we trade it in for a windy Friday, a warm weekend, and then alert day conditions we're keeping a close tab on for next Tuesday for all severe weather hazards possible right here in the area. All right, Alex, thanks. Thanks for joining us at 6. Have a great evening. We'll see you back here at 10.